Hello, welcome back to another video. Um, this time we are going to try to connect our GridDB server over to SQL Workbench. Um, so SQL Workbench, if you're not aware, is kind of like um, an interface where you can run your SQL queries in kind of like a GUI form. You can also do it in command line, uh, but since we have access to the GridDB shell these days, there's really no need to use it in the um, the terminal. Um, that I, I can't think of any reason anyway. Uh, but there is some value in using the GUI um, in case that's you just prefer to have a GUI interface. Um, so it'll connect via JDBC, which we have already talked about. Um, but let's um, go ahead and download that and see how it works. So um, here you can, on Google, I don't know if you can see this. Let me try to zoom in. Uh, you can just search SQL Workbench. Um, not Corkbench, a Workbench. Um, so yeah, my SQL Workbench is different. So we're looking at SQL Workbench. So my SQL Workbench is, you might have guessed, is for um, MySQL. So obviously this is not MySQL. Um, so we can download the current stable version. It's the most prudent thing to do. Um, and then we can download here. It says generic package for all systems or generic package for all systems with no optional libraries. Um, I don't think we need the libraries, so let's just copy this. I'm doing it in the terminal. Um, let's see. Wget download this. Okay, and then let's make a dir uh, SQL workbench. And then we can unzip. Okay, um, and then yeah, you can see here, here's the, here's the CLI version. Uh, but we're going to use the actual um, GUI. So hopefully it comes across on camera here. It might seem small. Um, it looks like my credentials are already saved here. So let's um, not use this. So how do I delete this? Delete. Okay. Um, so first thing we'd want to do is we want to go to File, and then we want to go to Manage Drivers. Um, so GridDB does not have a default option here. So you would have to add your own. So all these all these other ones are here by by default, uh, but we can simply add it. So click here, new driver. So GridDB is already added by me. So let's try GridDB2. Um, must be unique. And then you can just navigate over to the JDBC um, the grid the grid store JDBC file that we have from before. If you don't have it, you can just head over to GitHub and download it. There's a Maven repo link down direct link. Um, so yeah, basically you go here to user. Uh, share Java and we just navigate over to GRI um, and we can see here we have a bunch of grid stores uh, but let's try the 5.0 I, I think they all would work um, so let's set this one and it automatically sets a class name for us hit OK and then we'd go to connect window and uh, this thing keeps going up so let me just try to Ooh, not sure how to oh here we go create a new profession okay so let's try GridDB driver. We pick it from our list here. So GridDB2 URL is going to be JDBC. I'm doing ifs off the top of my head. I don't really remember. So I think it's JDBC, then grid store, and then this, and then the default address of your local um, running GridDB is this 239. And then the, the SQL port is 41999. And then you do the cluster name, which in my case is default cluster. Um, Yours is probably my cluster. It's been changed recently to my cluster. And then you do the database name. So every GridDB installation comes with a database called public. Um, so we'll just use that. But of course, if you created your own and you silo things off between users, you obviously put that in there. Um, username, we're going to use a default admin. And the password is also set for admin. You can, of course, change this. Um, and then now we can try test. And it says connection to this is successful. Okay, so this is our, um, yeah, our JDBC connection string. So okay, so now we're connected. Um, so I should have data from the other video where I was showing the time series queries. Um, so let's uh, select. Let's do it. Right. Let's select all from um, population. Maybe it'll work. Is this execute? There we go. Yeah, so as you can see, if um, you have a very complex queries, 
obviously this is very simple but if you have very complex queries it'll really help to have something that'll save your queries and something that'll help you visualize everything and it just helps if you're doing a bunch of number crunching and not just you know using the api to to check things here and there um so i think that's actually it so i don't think there's much to get into um so i'll just end it here and then if i need to add it later i will do that